Hello there. Jolla Finnish software company was kind to lend us a Jolla tablet to review. This is Simo from Review Jolla and on this video review part 1 I'm showing you the quality of the hardware and the simple user interface of Selfish OS 2.0. Our later part 2 focuses on feathers and usability and video part 3 on software support lifecycle and the company behind all this. Jolla tablet feels quite solid to hold. The weight is all right to me. And these two rounded edges on both sides gives quite a nice grip to your fingers. So it's easy to hold, at least on landscape mode. Sides are white, more smooth, easy to keep clean. Little Jolla logo there. On top of the left side, there a micro USB 2.0 plug, and next to it a micro SD plug supporting open standard memory cards up to 128 gigabytes. But if you have an SDXC card, that will require reformatting to some open Linux standard, and to make it easy, Yolla is planning to add the format option into the device settings. Main camera, front camera, is placed on the same corner, it's quite invisible there, 2 megapixels, and also in the same corner is the 5 megapixel backside camera here. Backplate looks and feels like brushed metal, but it's actually plastic also, but it does give a fine feeling and looks quite excellent. Stereo image for the sound seems to require this device to be used on portrait landscape as the loudspeakers are here. Uh, on the other hand, there are no tablets with a great sound quality anyway and at least I prefer listening to music either using headphones or sending the audio via Bluetooth connection. Uh, this device carries 32 gigabytes of internal memory. There is also a 64 gigabyte model manufactured. On the left side, we can see power button, volume button, same smooth white plastic, and a 3.5 millimeter audio block. The fully laminated display. Let's. Turn this on at this stage. Few seconds. And Yolla Loco appears. Fully laminated display seems to reflect some light, but the resolution of it is quite awesome. Yolla has selected a entry level Intel processor, 1.8 GHz quad core and uh, it has an integrated graphic chip and it'll be interesting to see how well does it run this fully laminated display with a lot of pixels 3.1 megapixels squeezed into 16 times 12 centimeters area bringing user a pixel density of 330 pixels per inch high above the resolution of normal human eye. I'll skip the VLAN connection at this point. Learn the basics of your YOLA. Uh, this is a forced tutorial app which user is supposed to go through in the first time and it's actually pretty useful for new users, but at, as I know already the selfie saw us quite well, I'm going to do a little trick and click few corners. Now I'm on the lock screen of the device. It shows the date and time and battery on top and now the display shuts down. You can turn it on with a simple double tap and there's a guide that you can open the device either from left or right with a flick. 
entering the home screen. Now it's empty, but this space is reserved for all your running applications. Now let's see the basic user, user interface. The Selfish OS 2.0 is user case based on gestures. And the uh, interesting gesture is Edge Swipe, which is started from over the edge towards the center of the screen. And from the left, I can see able to open notification screen. From the right, the same. From bottom, applications grid. And from top, a menu with locking the device, silencing it, and changing the ambience to something very different. Now this is the party ambience. Let's see. These photos are from a photo contest you all are organized to their fans and they are selected by those people. Okay, let's start a couple of apps. As you can see, the basic set of apps is very, very limited and uh, e there's not even an email app. There's messages, browser, camera, people, which means contacts, Yolla Store to install more apps, gallery for photos, videos, probably, settings, clock and tutorial, which I passed. Let's start the clock. Now I'm in the clock and let's see the gestures again. I can still pull from the bottom to enter the app grid, from top to enter the top menu, and from side, this is an interesting gesture, I can peek to the home screen and the clock is dropped there as a little cover. Tapping it brings me back to the clock. So this is a multitasking green of several applications. Let's start for example the gallery. Oh, this is beautiful. Now let's have a view on the display quality here. I'm trying to turn it towards the light to see some reflections. This is okay and color production seems quite excellent on different corners. So this is really a quality display. Let's take a colorful image for example. This looks interesting. And now I'm preventing it from following the orientation, holding my finger on the center of the screen while turning the device so I can still see further the color balance on this device. Pretty good, I would say. Okay, let's drop the gallery to the home screen. Now we have clock and gallery both there and open the next one, entering settings, which is interesting. Okay, a lot of settings. We'll get back to this in our feathers review. Thanks for watching this part one. Hope you enjoyed and welcome to see our next part also. Thanks for viewing.